Hello everyone on Sunday. So this is a short video uh, on a patient that we actually encountered and find it very interesting. So basically this is a patient, she is an old woman and she said that she has difficulty in breathing but there's nothing significant. Uh, the oxygen saturation is 95% so it's not that low. However, as you can see here, when she breathes, it's not it's not that uh, tachypnea, but you can see when she inspire uh, on the inspiration phase, there's a retraction on abdominal as you can see here, but there's no intercostal muscle retraction. So we suspect that that um, maybe she has diaphragmatic paralysis because you know she's trying to use the abdominal muscle so much when she breathe in. So basically, we do ultrasound bedside normally. Uh, diaphragmatic ultrasound did it in different view to see uh, appropriate diaphragmatic thickness but uh, on this page I, I would like to people who actually can do EFAS to actually see how you can see diaphragm movement from the EFAS view so you put the probe you know horizontal knock to the board on the right upper quadrant and left upper quadrant on uh, in between the thorax and then uh, what you can see here, and so the first one, this is normal, you know, in the normal side, you can see the right diaphragm actually move on the left, uh, sorry, on the upper side. So I'm going to write something here. So this, as you can see, there's a movement here, downward when the patient actually inspired. However, on the right side on this patient, as you can see, she breathed in so much if you can see from outside. However, as you can see, there's no movement here at all. You know, there's no current sign, no anything. So we suspect maybe there's an abnormal on this side. So what we did is sound on M mode. We put M mode aligned into the diaphragm. On the left side or on a normal one, you can see the bump here when the patient breathed in, you know, so it's called diaphragmatic excursion. So this is a inspiration phase. However, on the right side, we suspect, you know, um, abnormal. There's nothing here, the flat light. So basically, even though the patient breathed in so much, there's nothing, no diaphragmatic excursion. So that's why she has um, difficulty in breathing and the oxygen set is 95. It's not normal, but you know, it's not that low because the lung of this patient is high. So basically this is a drawing illustrating again. This is inspiration and expiration. So basically again, inspiration here, there's actually uh, excursion amplitude, which is uh, six to seven centimeters in normal person, you know, and if in this patient there's no, there's no bump at all. So basically you suspect diaphragmatic paralysis. And this is, um, this is the symptoms that, uh, you can suspect diaphragmatic paralysis or topnia, obviously. In this patient, of course, there's uh, abdominal retraction during inspiration. But the thing that uh, I would like you to, to encourage you to actually suspect is hypercapnia. So basically the patient would come in with uh, hypercapnia symptoms, which, which is um, nausea, insomnia, you know, because there's high CO2. So basically if there's three of these triad, it doesn't have to be three of this. You have to be careful that maybe there's diaphragmatic paralysis. And this is uh, this is from Basel Eriksusi. I I'm, I hope I pronounced the name right. Uh, this doctor is actually pretty good. He did a lot of stuff on slide share on uh, thoracic ultrasound and freehold ultrasound. I I suggested you look uh, him up. This is actually you know he uh, lists three things that we could do with diaphragm ventral cell, but what we did is this. So we asked the patient to just deep breathe in. There's no sniff test and we didn't see bump. So you know, we suspect diaphragmatic paralysis. The statistics significant, obviously it is pretty good on deep breathing. So we did this, you know, here we asked the patient to deep breathe in and we see that uh, it's not six or seven centimeters in this patient there's no excursion at all on right or on the right side that we suspect abnormal 
And um, the thing that um, would cause in this patient, she has history of a fell down and then you know she felt deep sneer after that and the chest x-ray is normal there's no red fracture so maybe it is freedom of dysfunction or sometimes uh 70 percent from research say that it's idiopathic uh the thing is the if it's one side the patient would come in and there's no uh, obvious symptoms but if there's two side or both side they're from paralysis normally the patient would cause arrest or dyspnea so that way obviously you repeat put in intuition so for me the thing that you need to be careful is actually a one side of uh, diaphragmatic paralysis on chest x-ray on the right side obviously you know the right side is is uh, higher than the left side diaphragm but it shouldn't be more than two centimeters you know here so <laughs> i draw not pretty good so this shouldn't be more than two centimeters so this one obviously you know, there's abnormally raised right diaphragm again but this one is the left side so this one is easy if the left side is is you know higher than the right side maybe it's left side diaphragmatic paralysis or maybe it is um, something else like subphrenic uh, fusion so you need to to be careful so thank you very much i hope uh, i hope you enjoy this uh, video and uh, subscribe to our channel or go to emgallery.org for more clinical side thank you